Hey everyone, Mirai here, and welcome to part 4 of this multiboxing gameplay video guide. In the last video I talked about questing as a multiboxer and how to go about making it a bit less tedious. This one is more of a general video with a lot of nice to know information while multiboxing. So let's begin with latency and how it affects you as a multiboxer because this is kind of important. Now the term latency refers to how long it takes your game client and the game server to communicate with each other. Latency affects everything you do in game, but you typically don't notice it until it begins to rise and cause problems. It's normally measured in MS, which stands for milliseconds, and the lower this number is, the better. Not every game will show you an exact number though, and sometimes you only get a colored bar, which indicates low, medium, or high. Not really a big deal either way. Now, when you're multiboxing, you essentially have to double your latency for some actions. Reason being is because your characters never communicate directly with each other. The game server is always the middleman, so to speak. So this means that when you do something, anything in game, communication between you and your other characters needs to take a full round trip before each of them know what's going on. And a great example of this is follow distance. Now you can see that on my main screen, my other characters are a good distance behind me. But if I change over to one of their screens, they're all right behind me. What you're seeing on my main screen is an illusion caused by latency. They really are much closer than they appear to be. Now this example is merely visual and would rarely ever affect actual gameplay, but there is another problem that latency introduces which can affect gameplay. On the left character, you can see that I have this NPC targeted, and on the right character, I have nothing targeted. No argument there. Now if I change targets with the character on the left, and then quickly press my assist button, immediately after changing targets, the character on the right will pick up the old NPC target. Watch this. Hello. So why does that happen? Well, long story short, it's caused by the latency between the client and the server, and the second character gets the old target because the server hasn't yet acknowledged that the first character on the left has changed targets. Ultimately, if you try to change targets and assist too quickly, then it's likely you're going to experience this problem. What you can do to avoid this is just wait like half a second before assisting and everything should be fine. Now again, this is all dependent on latency, so if you've got high latency to the game servers to begin with, I'm looking at you oceanic players, then you might have to wait a full second before you can assist. This is latency, and this is how it affects multiboxers. The next thing I'd like to talk about is that there might be slight differences across each of your character's user interfaces, which can cause issues when broadcasting the mouse cursor. Now, some of these you can fix and some of these you can't, but regardless, they're generally annoying to deal with. The first issue is caused by the overall scale of the UI. Different settings can affect the scale, but only a handful of games give you the option to manually adjust that scale yourself. For example, in World of Warcraft, there is an option to adjust the UI scale under the advanced settings. This is generally one of the first things you should look for if you're experiencing an odd scaling issue while in-game. Other times there is no slider available to the player, and the scale of the UI is then likely dependent on the resolution of the game client itself. So always make sure that the game client resolutions match up as well. On the other hand, some differences in your UI may be completely out of your control altogether. For instance, in World of Warcraft, certain classes have an extra, smaller bar above the normal action bars. And in my experience, this throws off the default position of the loot roll window. Blizzard does allow mods and add-ons in World of Warcraft, so I could potentially fix this small issue. But generally speaking, from the perspective of the default UI, sometimes frames can be offset, and something like this may be out of your control depending on the game. Now, one last thing that can really catch you off guard is that an NPC's dialogue may be slightly offset on each character, which can easily result in misclicking when using repeater to mirror your choices. In this first example, you can see that the quest text is the same, but because one character's name is shorter than everyone else's, it offsets the text, which makes the paragraph slightly shorter, and this results in the dialogue choice not being pushed down in line with the rest of the party. 
In this second example, the length of my character's names doesn't matter because if you take a closer look at the text itself, it's entirely different between the two characters, yet the NPC is the same and the quest I'm accepting is the same. Ah. <sighs> so, while this is a pretty rare occurrence, at least in World of Warcraft, it does happen and it's something to keep a lookout for. But of course, if you had watched the last video in the series, then you should already be checking your quest log and quest tracker for these things anyway. A question that some new players ask is, why is my experience different between each character? Well, the obvious answer is that you probably died at some point during a fight, and well, if that happens enough, your characters typically fall way out of sync with each other in terms of experience and levels. On the other hand, there are numerous other reasons which may not be immediately apparent. First, if the game you're playing has any special perks of any sort which give a boost in experience. For instance, in World of Warcraft, both heirloom armor and being in a guild that is above a certain level can give an increase in experience. So if not all characters are wearing this special armor, or not all characters are in the same guild that gives such a boost, then this could be a reason why experience points are offset. Also, gathering professions in multiple MMOs give experience per node, so if you're only gathering on one character, then that will easily lead to them leading the pack in terms of experience. This next example may only pertain to World of Warcraft, but when you discover a location within a zone, you normally receive some experience points. Now, your other characters are always following a few yards behind your main, and if your main character crosses far enough into his subzone to discover it for the first time and receives experience, but your followers don't travel far enough into that same area, then they won't get the discovery, they won't receive the experience points, and that is going to cause them to be offset from the main character. These examples may seem like there's such a small percentage of experience points that this wouldn't typically matter, but if it goes unnoticed for long enough, it tends to add up. Next, I'm going to talk about phasing. Phasing is becoming a very popular technology among many MMOs, and while this example I'm about to show deals specifically with World of Warcraft, this could easily affect other games as well. So, in World of Warcraft, when you cross a zone line, you may also end up crossing what is referred to as a phase line. When you cross a phase line, all of your characters are going to disappear from each other, which is going to cause follow to immediately break. And some of them may even be left behind in the prior zone. Now, you rarely ever deal with this as a solo player unless you happen to be on a multi-person mount when crossing a phase line. So, the first time you do experience this, it's probably going to leave you wondering what the f just happened. So, the way that I deal with phasing is I first make sure that I'm walking in a straight line. I then hit auto run on my main, I turn on broadcasting, and then I hold down my move forward key. This ensures that all of my characters are going to push across the phase line. After that, I wait for everyone to reappear, and then I hit follow again. And this is true for whether I'm on foot, on a ground mount, on a flying mount, or whatever. However, if you want, you can get a little fancier. I'll start this off in the same way as I did before, but after passing across the phase line while still holding down my movement key, I hit auto run again so that they're all moving forward, I then release my movement key, I turn off broadcasting, and I hit my follow key. And it almost looks as if there was never an issue at all with crossing that phase line. Now phase lines exist all over the place and there's no visual indicator or warning that you're about to cross one. But it's just another thing that you have to keep an eye out for and you will eventually learn where the phase lines are throughout the world. Last but not least, a very useful tip for those of you wanting to change of characters or character sets on the fly. Now, by default, in World of Warcraft, if you try to change to a different character that Iceboxer expects, you are going to be presented with an error message when you log back in on that other character. This message doesn't pop up for every single game that Iceboxer supports, but it will happen in World of Warcraft if you're using the standard setup. Generally speaking, you don't want to be swapping characters around like this if you have things set up and hard-coded to certain characters in IS Boxer. Now, it might seem like you have to close all the game clients and then relaunch an entirely new character set, but this is not the case. More often than not, 
All you need to do is log out to the character selection screen, launch your other character set, wait for the game clients to refresh, and after you see the overlay message pop up stating that the character set was successfully launched, you can then log back into your team and continue playing as normal. Granted, if you have super custom settings set up on each of the characters or character sets that you're trying to swap between, then it may be best to just shut down the game clients and do a fresh launch so that there's no conflicts. And that's it for this video. In the next video, I'll be covering how to deal with not only melee classes, but also mixed teams in combat. Thanks for watching, guys.